Hi everyone, I'm Iverson Lee. So welcome to this uh, finale or episode five of Pathway to Entrepreneurship video series here. So and as uh, we already uh, promised on episode number four, this episode number five we're going to talk about the eye of the future. Yeah, which means that yeah, it's very important uh, for a business owner or entrepreneur to actually know how to anticipate. You know what is the likelihood of the future we become. Don't you think this is important? For example, what if you actually can know, right, your next move of your competitor? What if you know there could be a changes on the, your customer behavior? Or what if you know that there are certain regulation or upcoming trend that might affect your business? Or what if you can know actually uh, your, there are certain uh, maybe unrest of your staff, right, this year? Or maybe there's a potential of very high turnover this year? Or what if you also discover that there might be a very great huge opportunity in terms of expanding your business this year? Yeah, so all this uh, part here is uh, the benefit we learn part is we're able to tell uh, what probable events might happen in the future. Therefore, that's why we call this labor this episode is called the eye of the future. So how can we actually do this? Right? So and in order to do that, I need all of you here yeah, to print your butter chart and if just in case this is the first time you are seeing this video I would advise you to actually look back on first episode number one until episode number four before you uh, look at this video here so you give you a more better understanding and a strong fundamentals of what we are talking about all right so now on this uh, episode here we are talking fully on the power of anticipation Right, so how can you anticipate something in the future? Uh, just like weather forecast, right? If you're able to anticipate today's training, your strategy of going out will be different, right? You might bring your umbrella, you might change your activities. So the same thing applies to your business or to your career as well. Yeah, if you're on your career, you, you, you suddenly discover that this year there'll be a huge restructuring happening and you might get affected on this. Yeah, how, how would be your strategy if you knew this in advance? Yeah, so if you knew it in advance, which means that you have unfair advantage, right? You can actually prepare earlier so to embrace or even change the situation here. Yeah, so how do we do this in Batsu? So in order to do that, first of all, you need to plot your chart first. So on the screen here, yeah, these are links that you can go into to print your Batsu chart. Yeah, so once you get your chart ready here, so let me just show you. This is the chart you're going to get in here. So Normally, when you learn parts, there are only two main important components you need to look for. Right? So in the chart here, we already, uh, the slide here already highlighted for you. There are two four square here, uh, red color square here. The first one on top and then the, the next one here in the bottom here. So the first uh, square here on the, on the top here, we call this a nadir chart. You know, see a nadir chart here. And then the bottom square here is what we call a love pillar. So these are the technical terms when we learn Batsu. But for this, uh, to explain this to a layman people, so uh, these are the slides you can actually refer to. The top slide here talking about preparation. Uh, so what, what is preparation mean? So if you start your own business, you need, to, uh, you need to actually acquire the skill, you need to gather the team, right? You need to actually prepare your business proposal. You need to talk to clients, you need to launch your sales campaign. So a lot of stuff you need to do, right? You need to get funding. So the top part here, if you're involved into these preparation uh, activities, we look at this part, you know. So here we're talking about skills, we're talking about talent, we're talking about passion, yeah, we're talking about uh, it could be uh, your ability to generate more idea to create wealth. You know, all these things here are about who you are. Yeah, your preparation part. Yeah, what you're able to do, and then the second part here that also equally important is we're talking about opportunity. Yeah, opportunity means that what is comes to you. Yeah, what is comes to you into your business or in your life, right? So uh, it could be you meet the right people or maybe uh, there are a new partnership coming in, there are new business opportunity coming in, right? Or maybe there are certain crises of cash flow on your business that you, might not, you cannot see right now. Or it could be your partner suddenly changed their life goal. Now they don't want to actually uh, do this business with you anymore. You know, there are so many different ways yeah, that can actually turn uh, your business direction, right? So this part here talking about opportunity. Right, opportunity could mean something good or something good event might happen, right? A good partnership or good wealth opportunity also means sometimes could be a crisis as well. So you want to look at that part, 
these are the areas you should look for. Right. So now, since today, this episode, we talk about anticipation. Right. So we are not going to look a lot on this, but we we'll rather talk about this because this one represents opportunity. Right. What will happen to you? Or, or in the technical term, we call this is the luck pillar. Right. So let us zoom into this uh, luck pillar here. So whenever we talk about this luck pillar, we are talking about this part, right? Yeah, this other part we are talking about. So if you are, let me just uh, draw this for you. This is the part. Yeah, this is the part we are talking about, the luck pillar. Yeah, so this, you can regard this luck pillar as a uh, season of life. So every 10 years, there will be go through a new season of life. Or you may call this is a software upgrade or downgrade, yeah, if you will. Uh, so this happens every 10 years. So in here, in this chart here, this is a sample chart here. So which means that each block here governs every 10 years. Yeah, so the highlighted in yellow color here represent the current season you're going through. Right? So if you already uh, use up all the 10 years, then you move on to the next one and next one. Then how do you know when you're going to shift to the next uh, season or the next lock pillar? You look at the top here. You see the top here? The top here represents a number. This number represents your age. Right? So for this person, the moment this person hit 40 years old, he's going to go in through this luck pillar or this season until another 10 years. Then he go, once he reach 50 years old, then he's going to go through this uh, luck pillar. You know? So every luck pillar govern 10 years. So what will happen every time you change to the new luck pillar? Right, so let me just uh, share with you how do you do this. You will look for a, a new lock pillar. So we are talking about this part. Yeah. So every time you, new, you change a lock, new lock pillar, which means that it's a big change happening to you. you know? So the reason learn parts is so you can know upcoming change, what will happen to you. And that's why we call our ability to anticipate. So what are anticipation we're able to uh, derive from the parts chart? Basically, there are only two things. Either a new thing comes to you, yeah. Maybe it's a new people come to you, yeah. New people coming to you, yeah. You meet a new people, a new partnership, or it could be a new products. You have new idea and create new products, right? Or maybe you have a new idea of starting a business, right? So you have a new ideas, you have new inspiration, you you have a new, um, maybe a. Uh, new drive or new purpose, you know. So all these things might happen the moment you reach to another love pillar. You know, something new happened. It could be all of this. But new doesn't mean everything is good, you know. So new could mean sometimes maybe new also new health issue. Right? So it could be something new, right? Suddenly come to you also could be, you know, you know, so or maybe a new uh maybe uh, some a uh, new enemy, you know, in your business or whatever. Yeah, there are someone like this or new competitor. You know, so all these things here, yeah, it could be happen, right? So every new lock pillar come. So, but again, besides something new happen, uh, the, when you shift to the next lock pillar, also means something to do with existing. It could be the existing people that you have right now might go away, right, out of your life. Yeah, maybe a break of partnership. Yeah, it could be, right? So some people that are already existing, maybe certain staff that you're having right now, suddenly they'll tell you that I'm, 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 they're going to look for another company. So a change of a lock pillar, which means that something existing that you have might go away. Yeah, maybe certain wealth that you have right now, suddenly uh, now you start to lose money and you don't know why, right? So this part can be traced from the lock pillar, something existing, but not only just go away, it also can mean expand. Maybe right now you already existing. You have a uh, a great relationship with your spouse, right? It doesn't necessarily mean change a love pillar means that this person will go away. It could mean expanding, which means that maybe there's a more connection you have with your existing spouse, right? You're expanding, which means that your relationship becoming better as well. You know, so it could mean something like this. So how do we know whether is a uh, something go away or maybe it's not going away but it's expand on what you're already having right now we need to look at the content of the luck pillar right so right now since we are um, we are all of you here are beginner we're going to start with something very very simple we only look at one very important aspect is is the luck pillar or the season you're going through maybe your current season or the next luck pillar have wealth opportunities or not yeah, so let me uh, show you what it is. So whenever we're talking about wealth, 
Yeah, there are two elements we are looking at in Pazi. One is direct wealth, another one is indirect wealth. All right. So we, how, if we want to know whether our current love pillar or our current season of life contains wealth opportunity, we need to look at the, or assess the presence or absence of either of these elements, either is DW or IW element. Yeah? So, but before I go into that, let me tell you, the moment you're going through this kind of uh, wealth element, what does it mean? Yeah, so it means one thing here is about your wealth opportunity will increase a lot, which means that you see a lot of way for you to make money. The second part here might happen also if you're going through a wealth lock pillar, your, the importance of money suddenly become very apparent. Suddenly you think about, you know, you want to know how to uh, invest, you, you want to actually know how to make more money, suddenly become an important priority in your life. So which means that a new mindset coming in. Remember, the, every love pillar represents something new, could come in. So which means that a new mindset coming in. Yeah? Have, you, have you seen some people, their whole life, they actually doesn't care about uh, making money. Suddenly, one day they tell you they want to learn about investment. Very likely, they are shifted to a wealth love pillar. Yeah? So this wealth love pillar also represents hard work as well. Yeah? So if you're going through a, a wealth love pillar, which means also these are the time you're given a lot, a lot of responsibility in your work and you need to actually uh, perform and if you're able to perform well and subsequently you get rewarded, right? So these are the indication or the interpretation whenever someone going through a wealth love pillar. Let me show you how you look at this from the love pillar. So the love pillar here, yeah, so currently we need to look at the current one. Yeah, as I shared just now, the current one will be actually highlighted in yellow color. So you see a, a, a yellow color here. So since now we only focus on wealth element, so we want to look at either is DW, direct wealth or indirect wealth in this person current love pillar. So where do we look for this element here? So there are two areas you should look for. The first one, let me just use different color here. Uh, the first one will be this area. Yeah, this area is one. And then the second part you should look for is this area. Yeah, only two areas you should look for. So now let's do this exercise together. So let's look at this area, whether you have one or not. Let me zoom in. All right, so this one is EG, this one is not wealth element, but what if this one? Yeah, this one is indirect wealth, right? So, uh huh, we got one. This person are going through a wealth element luck right now. Okay, it's good. And then let's look at the second part here. On top, is it a wealth element? Yeah, this is DO, right? So there's no wealth element. So in this person chart, there are one wealth element here. So which means that this person are going through the wealth element. What does it mean? Yeah, like I explained just now, it could be a wealth opportunity or maybe this person suddenly acquired the wealth mindset or it could be someone that right now they are given a lot of responsibility in their work and now they need to perform. You know, so these are the few we can read on what are the likelihood will happen to this person during this uh, current season of life. Some of you here right now might actually read your own chart and discover that you don't have this, right? And then you get uh, uh, worried, right? Why, what does it mean? Right? Why not you look at the next one, right? Maybe you're actually going through uh, yeah, wealth luck yeah, for the next 10 year cycle. Yeah, look into that and why you want to do this so we can plan not only on your current season, of life but also the next season of your life as well. Don't you think uh, is Pazza is very useful in this way? And this, we only just focus on wealth element but in Pazza there are so many different aspects of life we can look into the current love pillar as well. Yeah, so right now since we're talking about wealth element, then some of you might ask, right, what is the difference if you find your wealth element is on top or at the below? Yeah, so some of you, you get your wealth element here, right? So this means on top, and then some of you, you discover your wealth element here is bottom. Yeah, so if it's on the top, which means that the, it's easy, yeah, you get the wealth, your chances or the effort for you to attain the wealth actually is easier. And if you, the wealth element uh, is resides in the bottom, which means it's harder, it takes more time, yeah, it takes more effort to do it. Yeah, but the thing here is if it's on the top, since it's easier, the money might be, the amount of the money might be just average. So if it's on the bottom, you, although it's hard, although it requires a lot more effort, although it's uh, more challenges or you need more time, but the moment you're able to attain or get it, the amount is, is huge. Yeah, so that's the difference between the wealth element if you uh, resides on the top and 
between and also the, if the wealth element actually resides in the bottom. Yeah, so this is how we actually assess the luck pillar or what we call the season in life. Yeah, so I hope this uh, video here actually uh, help you in one way or another. And we've been with this journey for like five episodes. I hope in one way or another, yeah, the information that I share here able to touch some aspect of your life. Yeah, before we end this uh, five uh, episode series here, all of us here, the reason we learn Pata, we learn Feng Shui or we learn Shiman or whatever subjects we're interested in learning, yeah, the outcome here is we want to have a great life, right? Great life uh, might be something very subjective to you. Maybe it's about wealth, maybe it's about great relationship, maybe it's about health, you know. So there are no right or wrong. The great life must be on your own term, right? So the next question here is how do we create a great life? Yeah, so let me just show you here the great life secrets here. Yeah, great life secrets here means that in order to create a great life, there are two secrets you need to master. Right? So let me show you the, the two things here. So they are, we are talking about here is this uh, today because in the, whatever we study here is about duality, it's about yin and yang. So the first skill you need to master here is the secret of achievement. It's something we are, it could be our career, yeah, we want to actually grow ourselves to become a better person so we can get more, uh, maybe you want to create more wealth, a better uh, relationship or better health. All of these things you got to do with achievement. So achievement talking requires you to have strategy to help you or step-by-step -step, uh, action plan to help you to get what you want. You know? So achievement is very important because this part will actually help you to, um, to go to the next level of your life. Which in fact, a lot of people, the reason they learn parts, yeah, they learn uh, uh, feng shui is help them to amass greater wealth, you know, or career, they get more respect, you know, they have more recognition in their work. That one is about achievement. Yeah, you feel, you feel successful. But the other part here, yeah, it doesn't matter how successful you are, how rich you are, if you are not feeling happy, yeah, you, I would say that one will be ultimate failure. So the next secret you need to master in life is also the secrets of fulfillment. Yeah, do you feel happy inside or not? Do you feel grateful every day or not? Yeah, do you feel that you are driven by the sense of purpose and love or not? Yeah, who do you care about? You know, other than yourself. You know, do you feel that yeah, you're born here for a reason? Yeah, so this part here we're talking about fulfillment here. So if you're able yeah, to actually uh, master the secrets of these two forces in life, the duality of these two forces here, then you will create a great life. Yeah, so just some of you here, yeah, if you are interested to actually uh, learn more about this, as you can see here, if you're talking about, if you're interested, is on achievement, yeah, this achievement here. So we actually, we have a program here called Awaken Period 9. We are going to focus on how to actually uh, create strategy using Pazi or Feng Shui achievement to get what you want, you know, that's very important. And then if you are interested on fulfillment, so we have a program here called Yijing Secrets here. Yijing Secrets is a program to help you to actually discover the true meaning of your life not just be becoming an achiever, but you are truly fulfilled and call the life that you truly own. Yeah? You get the life that you truly deserve, where every day you feel happy and grateful for. You know, so these are the two this program uh, talking about. So if you are interested yeah, to know more about this, yeah, you can email us at this uh, email address here. It's called courses at joeyap.com, yeah, as shown on the screen here. Okay, all right. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. You spend your time with, uh, with me here watching this video. Yeah, it's quite a journey here for this last uh, five episodes here. I truly hope that one of this uh, information that you learn here will be able to impact or improve some aspect of your life. So until then, I hope to see you live in person one day in one of our event. Until then, I wish everyone of you here have a great life ahead. Thank you. See you again.